every coach is a salesperson, but not every salesperson is a coach. I'll say that one more time. Every coach is a salesperson, but not every salesperson is a coach. I think that's the perfect quote to really kick off this video because in business, everybody has to make money, but not everybody has to make money in nefarious ways. And as my experience as a coach and also someone who's hired coaches before, um, this world is, is full of a lot of deceivers, liars, and wolves in sheep's clothing. And I just wanted to put out this video just to offer some tips and tricks on how to identify salespeople, how to save a lot of time, money, and energy uh, so you don't work with the wrong person, and also to better help you identify people that are going to help you to really uh, achieve whatever goals that you have set forth instead of just working with somebody who's just in it for themselves. Because at the end of the day, like coaching is really for three main things. Just number one is just to position people for success. Two is that like coaching also helps to foster opportunities for growth. And two, it also, I mean, three, it also really helps to expedite your personal and professional development. And a, a basic analogy that I can give you is uh, between like the athlete and the coach. Um, I was a division one football player and I just think about all of the really good coaches that I work with. Now, they were the ones that came up with the strategy. Um, as, the, as the player or the client, I was the one on the field executing. And the best coaches were the ones who had really sound strategies to position myself and the other athletes for success on the field. But for me, as the athlete or the client, it was really up to me to execute to achieve whatever ever goals I had set forth. And so the same thing is with your relationship as a client and the coach that you work with. But in this world, like you're, you're going to run into three different types of coaches. Coaches that are going to cultivate you, coaches that are going to constrain you, and coaches that are going to cripple you. Now, let's look at those three types of outcomes more in depth based upon their definitions. So the first outcome that you will get by working with a coach is uh, you'll be cultivated. And so the basic definition of the cultivate is to develop or improve by education or training. That simple. And so this is the type of coach you want to work with. Somebody who's going to help to cultivate you and make you a better person, help to expedite your personal and professional development, and also help you to um, achieve your goals a lot quicker. The second type of coach you'll run into is somebody who constrains you. And so the basic definition of constrainment is basically to limit someone's freedom or to limit the way they develop or grow. And so when you work with somebody who constrains you, essentially you just remain the same. Nothing ever changes. And then the third outcome that you will run into when working with the coach is that they can potentially cripple you. And the definition for cripple in this context is just to cause serious damage to someone or something, making them weaker or less effective. And this outcome is the most toxic because you're actually going to wind up in a lesser position than when you started. And so going back to that first quote that I mentioned, that every coach is a salesperson, but not every salesperson is a coach. Um, when you apply those to these three basic outcomes that you'll get when working with a coach, in all actuality, the only type of coach that you will actually work with is a coach that cultivates you. A coach that constrains you or a coach that cripples you is not a coach. They're salespersons. And so you have a lot of people in this industry who claim that they can cultivate you and help you to achieve whatever goals you have set forth. But in all actuality, they're kind of selling you a false dream or a false hope. So now that I've given you some 
context and some basic definitions behind the three types of outcomes that you'll encounter with coaches. Um, let me give you just a couple of hidden truths about coaches and salespersons who pose as coaches. Number one is that many of the coaches that you're working with haven't really achieved what they're selling. Um, prime example, so I'm a published author and there are tons of coaches uh, who can supposedly help authors to become a six-figure author. Well, a lot of these coaches who claim to help uh, authors become a six-figure author say that they themselves are six-figure authors. Well, when you start to do your due diligence and look at many of these six-figure authors, uh, they've sold nowhere close to six-figure worth of books. But what they've done is that they've built up a brand or they've created a course that has generated six figures in income talking about how they have become a six figure author when they're never there. So oftentimes you will find these coaches or salespeople selling you something that they haven't achieved to basically say, oh, actuality, I've made six figures from selling courses on how to be a six-figure author and now I'm a six-figure author. So that's an, just an example of coaches or people uh, selling you on stuff that they haven't even achieved themselves. So make sure you do your due diligence to verify that the coach you're working with has actually achieved what they're selling. Um, a second uh, unfortunate truth about working with coaches is that a lot of coaches hide behind legal liability. So obviously this is a common business rule is that no coach is legally liable for the outcome of their clients. Like me as a coach, I can't say that I'm responsible or that I can guarantee you a certain outcome. Like that's just common business knowledge. But a lot of salespersons, AKA coaches will basically leverage uh, those legal disclaimers and liability to sell you a product or service that they really know won't help you to achieve the goal you have in mind. But because of the litigious society that we live in, we all know that like you can't, they can't really be sued or held liable for your poor outcome or whatever poor outcome you, you get from working with them. So make sure that you really check those disclaimers and that you're uh, reviewing when you're working with these coaches and and salespeople because they, they oftentimes hide behind those. Now, a third hidden truth when working with coaches or salespersons is that oftentimes they will keep you trapped within an endless array or an endless buffet of countless products and services. And so when you're dealing with this type of coach or salesperson, instead of actually solving your problem or helping to progress you forward or helping to cultivate you, they really constrain you by providing you with nothing but another product or service, another course, another mastermind, or something that's just gonna keep you uh, dependent upon them uh, to expedite your growth. And so for me, I just find that to not really work out too well because like as a coach, I should be helping my clients to get a tangible outcome and moving on to the, to the next person I need to help. I mean, there's no point in really keeping people trapped and dependent upon myself. Like that's just constraining or crippling people. So that's a, another hidden truth or red flag that you'll see within this coaching world. And next, uh, one, another hidden truth that kind of uh, parlays with the, the aforementioned truth about the endless products and services is that many coaches or salespersons will just feed you crumbs. Um, and what I mean by this is that they won't give you 100% of the truth. They'll kind of give you partial truths or half truths, which will keep you dependent upon them. Um, a perfect example is that if you're working with somebody who's not practicing what they're preaching, you know, if they're, if they're telling you to go left and they're going right, that's a problem. If they're telling you to go up and they're going down, that's a problem. If they're telling you all you have to do is to do this little thing, 
but you're doing that and you're not getting the same results as them, um, that's a that's a major red flag. And so you just want to make sure that like whenever you're working with a coach, that they're fully uh, implementing everything that they're telling you to do. Because if they're not, then they might just be keeping you dependent upon them for a monetary reason. And so to counter many of those hidden truths or problems that I've encountered with salespeople who pose as coaches, number one is that I've achieved everything that I've, that I'm putting out there. Like I really truly embody my philosophy about becoming the entrepreneur of your life because I am the entrepreneur of my life and I really am trying to help my clients to achieve that same goal. Um, number two is that when it comes to liability, I know that I'm not legally liable for the outcomes of my clients, but if my clients are not getting positive results, then that's a reflection on, on my coaching. Like I would truly feel bad or feel some type of way if my clients were not getting positive results. Fortunately, they are, and I've gotten nothing but positive feedbacks from my clients, whether they're uh, non-governmental organizations, nonprofits, small business owners, small businesses, or just the single solopreneurs, they've all gotten positive results. And I'm so happy that that's true, but if they weren't, then I would have to change my coaching because it's not reflective upon me to produce poor results for other people. Uh, I'm accountable for my clients' results, even though I'm not legally accountable. And I really want to make sure that they uh, get the highest results when they're working with me. And uh, the, the next kind of point that I kind of counter when it comes to keeping people trapped in a hamster wheel of products, like I, I never have believed that that's a, a great way to coach. Like when I work with people, they get three tangible outcomes. Number one, I help them to develop a purposeful business mindset. Number two is that I help clients to also develop a profitable and proven business concept. And then three, I help my clients also to develop a proactive business model. Those are three tangible outcomes that really help uh, my clients to develop a sound entrepreneurial foundation. Aside from that, I don't do anything else because I'm really focused on getting those concrete results. And once my clients have achieved those results, they could go and work with somebody else or they may not even need anybody. So I just like having just those few outcomes that I really uh, work on because that helps me to become better at what I do. But it also shows to my clients that they get something tangible and they're not trapped in this endless uh, wheel of useless products and services. And then to, to counter that that last point of people just giving uh, or coaches or salespeople just giving their clients crumbs. For me, like I'm a lifelong learner, like I don't know everything. I'm never going to know everything. But even though I'm still growing and improving myself, like when I work with my clients, I tell them everything that I've learned, the good, bad, and the ugly, because my whole goal is to help to get my clients up to the same level or better level than I'm at. Like, that's what it's all about, uh, being a true coach, is really cultivating people and helping them to get to your level, not keeping them crippled and below where they should be or keeping them constrained in a place where they shouldn't. So that's just kind of some of my thoughts on some of the hidden truths about coaching and how like I counter those with my specific coaching methodology and uh, belief systems. In sum, every coach is a salesperson, but not every salesperson is a coach. And hopefully by watching this video, I hope you have a better understanding of how you can identify a true coach that will actually help to cultivate you and help you to achieve your goals, help to expedite your personal and professional development versus identifying a salesperson that will cripple you and hold you back or a salesperson that will only constrain you and keep you stagnant uh, where you are. So my question for you today is, have you ever mistakenly hired a salesperson instead of a coach? And if so, how is your experience? Drop your comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. By the way, 
Thanks for watching this video. If you want to become the entrepreneur of your life, you can begin this process today by subscribing to this channel. Also be sure to click the notification bell to be alerted for whenever new content drops. Until next time. Thank you.